chairperson's statement, and then we can get Mr. Joe to introduce the subject. So, chairperson's statement is as follows This public hearing is being convened pursuant to the Community Charter and Local Government Act. In accordance with the Charter, the time and place of the public hearing was advertised in two editions of the Hope Standard newspaper. In accordance with the District of Hope Application Procedure and Public Hearing Information Meeting Procedural, Bylaw No. 1393 and the Local Government Act, the required specifications have been complied with. At this public hearing, any persons who believe that their interest in the subject property is affected by the proposed agenda item may speak or present written submissions to Council on this matter. As Chairperson, I will read any written briefs from persons unable to attend public hearings and for me, I'm part of the record. Those who wish to speak, uh, should, when invited to speak, clearly state their name and address for the record. It is important that all who speak at this meeting restrict their remarks to the matters contained in the bylaws. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making his or her views known. Members of council may ask questions of those making presentations. The main function of council at the public hearing is to listen to the comments of the public, not to debate the merits of the bylaws. Members of council may debate any issues on the bylaws at the time of third or final reading. Order of proceedings will be as follows. The Director of Community Development, Mr. Jeff Gill, and will briefly describe the matters under consideration and provide a brief explanation of the proposed bylaws to the applicant of the bylaws that will be us. Um, maybe invited comments. Uh, three, all written submissions will form part of the record of the public hearing. Four, oral submissions from the public will be heard. And any further written submissions, if any, will be received. And five, public hearing will be closed. It's important to note that no further submissions, either verbal or written, regarding the proposed bylaws can be made to Council following the public hearing. After this public hearing has concluded, the Council may, without further notice, give whatever effect it believes proper to the representations made at this public hearing. And the uh, uh, matter under consideration tonight is uh, uh, Hope Zoning Amendment uh, Bylaw No. 1436-2018. And... Uh, Mr. Gill, if you could uh, introduce why this is important for us. Uh, your Worship, through you, um, on July 23rd, 2018, Council was presented with a land development application 2518 in regards to a development variance permit regarding properties, seven of them at uh, Fort Street. Uh, the properties were introduced as a variance. Uh, it turned out that the plans that they created were based on sort of what we would typically find in the RS1 zone, which is a 45% site coverage. Uh, set coverage usually means how much the building envelope can sit on a lot. Uh, it's been on staff's radar to sort of look to increase that in the uh, C5 zone. However, we never got to time around this. This was our opportunity to do so, uh, initiated by sort of the developer's application. Uh, so the increase is looking at 35% only to single family homes proposed for the C5 zone by 10%, so 35% to 45%. Uh, looking at it on an overall community-wide basis, uh, there are four properties that are probably will benefit from this, um, bring them out of some sort of non-conformance, uh, and other than that, it should provide a little bit more infill for somebody else that's in the C5 zone for the purpose of the same value Okay, transfer transfers on board. <coughs> Any uh, comments <coughs> from the audience? This is Osbeta. I just think that basically... Could we grab your address as well for the record? 458 Copenhagen Street. Yeah. Uh, basically, this could be a standard, right? Building, basically house and taking 50% on the land for a big house with maybe 25% in the front, 30% in the back. Uh, you worship through you. Uh, the standard has already been set through the RS1 zone, the single family dwelling zone. Uh, it's just the C5 zone isn't consistent. This should create symmetry within the bylaw. Uh, technically, with what's been said is the setbacks are still going to be applicable in this case. So there's a 7.5 meter setback for the front yard, 4.5 in the rear. Okay. Thank you. Additional comments from the public? No, you basically said everything. Like, it does not matter what people say. You will push anyway, right? No, I, it does I not think, matter what I people think, what, think or say. I think Mr. Gill added clarity, and, and the reality is that uh, that just adds consistency to the zones. 
Yes. So it's, there's nothing particularly innovative about this change. Mm -hmm. It's just consistent. With, because with, I've you know. seen, uh, I don't know what the density is on the silver, uh, a hope silver thing there, but, but the houses are so big that people basically have no property. Creekside Estates? I think so, yes. Yeah. Uh, Creekside Estates are zoned RS2. Uh, and they are a strata property. Uh, it's typically the preference of the property owner or whoever's looking to purchase that if they want to keep a large yard or a small yard. It, 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 they have flexibility in the zone. You can build a smaller home if they wanted to for more yard space. I just fear that hope will be parceled for big homes with no property, no kids to, you know, with no kids being able to play anywhere. Because I drove through that creek side thing. It's had nowhere to go. Yeah, no, there, there's, they have fairly large numbers of small lots, that's for sure. But that's a different, different zone. Yeah. Good, good point. Any comments from council? Okay. Let's go for the public hearing. My, uh, I have one more question. These new houses which will be built, who, what kind of a people is hope attracting? Where these people come from? Well, I think we uh, we have a nice mix of people moving to our community. We have uh, people of all ages coming here, so it's it's been a pretty healthy. And how is home prepared to provide jobs and schooling? School board just destroyed one school, so what now? They will be jumping in and demanding money for another school. Like, does hope realize with bringing all kind of people, which is wonderful? But what about the jobs? What about the schools? We should think about these things as well because suddenly we will be booming with new blood. And they go to work at uh, Chilova. There is no jobs. I, I searched year for a job as a bookkeeper. I didn't find one. And I'm a hell of a good bookkeeper. And I was willing to go to Chilova. And there was nothing. It, it is important for us to have proper housing, though, because a lot of businesses choose not to move to Hope just because there is essentially no free housing. Businesses like no name, three, name three businesses. Well, any business that looks at Hope. I know that Emil Anderson moved out. And that was a big employer, I understand. And I do not consider Starbucks. The building is actually hideous. <laughs> Who designed it? I have no idea. But Starbucks with 12 bucks per hour will not provide for home and their people. I, I did job search before I came here. McDonald's pays $11 per hour. Tim Hortons pay night shift manager 12 bucks per hour. What kind of a people are we planning to attract? Since we have people who desperately need houses, pay $400 rent for 40, 20 years, and they just got evicted and they cannot find a place to live in home. Are these places you are planning building? Is this what they will be able to rent? Or yeah, you know what we can what we can do, what I would invite you to do if you would like, you could stick around for the end of the council meeting and you can we can uh, have a little friendly chat. Oh absolutely. But, uh, I, I have so uh, many concerns for the, people of hope. The public hearing is is officially over, so I think we have to kind Oops. of stick with the stick with the agenda here so that we uh, start the council meeting in time. So the next item on the agenda, and feel free to stick around for the, oh, the council okay. meeting. Yeah. Thank you. And um, the Committee of the Whole is next here, so I'd like to call that to order. Sorry, we've advertised it for 7 p.m. Oh, so we're going to have to, we're going to have to, uh, <laughs> if I don't so, so, so we might have a little time for some apologize. informal chatter here. <laughs> Well, you bring forward good points and council listens, so we've tried to strike a healthy balance for new people coming to the community. Of course, we can't mandate who comes to the community. There's no oh, living in a free society. We can't say only because, people that... you know, like, I have a friend. He's 80 years old. He built his own house 50 years ago on 